What's up, everyone? Jason Gilbo here with Rob Mazaika, taking a look at GPP picks for opening day on FanDuel and DraftKings. Finally, three-game slate out of the way. We get to the full-game slate. And um, overall, I mean, you got most of the aces on the hill, uh, so obviously that leads kind of a little bit for offense. But there's definitely a couple arms you can go out and just fully target. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we got the heavy arms like Kershaw and everyone. So you're going to want some cheap values in GPPs tonight because if you're going to be paying up for these guys, you want some uh, cheap guys to have upside uh, everywhere else. Yeah, and going game by game here, Marlins and Nationals first one. Steven Strasburg taking on Edison Volquez. Uh, on the Miami side, I mean, uh, catcher, I know you were looking at basically one really cheap uh, and hitting second, JT Real Muto. Yeah, JT Real Muto, he's uh, hitting second, which is, you know, rare for a catcher to hit second. Uh, he really hits like an outfielder in a catcher position. Uh, hitting second against Strasburg, not the best matchup. He does have a three uh, – what was it 347 Woba against righties in his career, uh, Real Muto. And at 2100, he's one of those values that he probably won't get you a zero that you could fit in to fit in like Kershaw or Thor or someone. Yeah, I definitely don't mind having 2100 on FanDuel, uh, especially with Kershaw being on the slate. You're know, obviously looking to use him. Um, as far as the rest of the runs, I mean, I'm personally not looking to use anyone else here. I mean, not that I don't think it's a bad lineup, but um, I think there are better options to kind of go with. Yeah, there's definitely better options. Uh, I don't mind Stanton in Tormund as well, just because he has had really good history against Strasburg, hitting three home runs off him in 38 at-bats. But he's, he's either a strikeout or bust. Yeah, definitely a boomer bust guy. On the national side, though, I mean, um, Edison Volquez is definitely one of the weaker arms on the slate. I know you're looking at a full-blown stack for them. Um, you know, obviously the front three I'm looking at quite a bit. I love Trey Turner over on FanDuel. I mean, 3700 is not a bad price for him. I love, yeah, I love the top four in this order. Trey Turner, Daniel Murphy, Bryce Harper, and even uh, Anthony Rendon. Um, they all seem to hit well against righties and Volquez. He's got the 342 uh, Woba against righties um, and 346 against lefties. So against both hands, he's uh, not the best. Uh, Turner, he's got upside with his legs and his bat. Murphy, upside with his bat. Harper, he can get a home run. It's opening day. And Rendon, he's just a good player to round out the stack with. Yeah, I mean, hitting fourth there on a cheaper side of things as well. Um, yeah, I mean, as you said, Volquez really struggles against both sides of the plate. This is a guy who's been trending downwards. Um, and you kind of look at Volquez, what he did last year. I mean, I was expecting him to kind of get bailed out by a good defense and playing at Kaufman for most of his starts, but that wasn't the case. I mean, this guy really is trending downwards in his career. He is, and then the Nationals, they're uh, implied to score four and a half runs tomorrow, and they're 212, minus 212 favorites uh, with Strasburg in the hill. I think they're going to try to get some good run support with him, and they're definitely a potent offense. Yep, definitely like the top half there. Atlanta and New York. Next one, Noah Syndergaard versus Julio Tehran. This one, um, I don't expect a ton of offense in, um, but I think overall I kind of do like some some uh, lefties for the Mets because Tehran's always been a guy who has struggled a little bit with left-handed bats. Um, was okay last year against him, but we know we've seen worse. Yeah, he was 325 Woba against them last year. Um, on the Atlanta side, I'm really not on anyone because it's really hard to target against Thor. Maybe in Ciarte or Twanson if they can get on and steal a base or something. But besides that, the numbers really don't line up for it. But these Mets lefties, I have a lot of interest in, uh, specifically Estrubo Cabrera. Yeah, Cabrera's got some big-time power against right-handed pitching. Uh, and City Field, not bad for left-handed power as well. Um, so I do definitely like those bats. And you can kind of get them at a cheap price tag as well. Um, and basically, I mean, the one thing I worry about, Taryn, is because there's six or seven lefties in this Mets lineup. There are. And then we also got guys like Granderson, who can hit right as well. And then we have Duda hitting seventh, coming off a year where he was injured pretty much the entire year, but he's only 2500 on FanDuel. That's a really cheap price for a guy who has shown three home run upside before. Yeah, Duda's got some power. Uh, I definitely don't mind him. The only downside is obviously the lineup spot. Um, Guys like Jay Bruce, I'm not particularly interested in. Neil Walker, I, I don't mind hitting fifth, uh, second base. I mean, he's got some power for a second baseman. I don't mind him either. Uh, second base is a weak position, and he's only 2,600 on FanDuel. He has the lefty-righty matchup. Uh, it's all right spot. If you, you could go with a full lefty stack in this. It's just it's really tough for the Mets with their lineup, the way it's set up, with Duda hitting seventh and Walk and Bruce hitting sixth and Cabrera hitting second. It's just hard to make. Yeah, it kind of breaks things up a little bit. I mean, I'm probably just looking at more one-offs. Yeah, I'm starting to look that way, too. Uh, Pittsburgh and Boston, uh, you and I kind of differ on this game. You're looking as a full-out tournament fade. Yeah, I'm off it. It's the highest total of the game. Uh, Porcello's the AL Cy Young winner, Garrett Cole. He actually didn't pitch as bad as people think he did last year, and I just think it's a really good fade in tournaments just because 
highest implied total, and it's going to bring in big ownership. Yeah, I mean, Cole's, Cole's been tough on righties. Um, lefties, he struggled with a little bit last year. I mean, obviously, I think he was dealing with some sort of injury throughout most of the season anyway. Curious to see how he comes back. Uh, Red Sox always draw that higher ownership. I mean, I'm with you on the Red Sox side looking to kind of fade some of these guys, uh, especially at some of their higher price tags. Um, ben Intendi, I don't mind hitting up top. I mean, he's still on the cheaper side. Uh, on the Pirates, though, I mean, Rick Barcelo, yes, reigning side, young winner. Um, he's a guy that just still I'm not going to believe in. Um, you know, I, I don't think he misses enough bats for me to I'm just like, I'm out of here not targeting against him. Um, and in Fenway, if guys like Marte and McCutcheon hitting on the right side, um, I, I like him more as FanDuel plays because they're a little bit cheaper than 4-7 and 4-9 on DK, but um, I definitely don't mind it. Yeah, see, I'm I'm a Porcello. I like Porcello. Uh, he limits a lot of hard contact. Um He's he's not gonna miss a lot of bats, obviously, and the twenty two wins was obviously inflated because of the offense last year. But I think he does a good enough job eliminating hard contact that he's able to uh, not be susceptible to an absolute blow up. So like I can see the pod, the Pirates scoring maybe like two or three runs, but that wouldn't be enough for me to uh, warrant a full stack. Yeah, I mean, I'm not definitely going with a full stack. Martin McCutcheon are the guys that I'm looking at. Um, lefty power in Fenway is always tough, so Polanco's kind of off my radar, and plus he's dealing with an injury. Um, and then these secondary guys, I mean, I won't really won't be looking at for the Pirates. Yeah, and plus Porcello's reverse split, so he's uh, better against lefties than he is against righties. <laughs> Uh, next one here, you got Colorado and Milwaukee. Junior Guerrero taking on John Gray. Um, this one, I, I I feel like it go numerous ways. I mean, you can definitely see these arms getting some upside, but you also can see the bats getting some upside as well. Yeah, it's definitely a tournament type of game. Uh, we'll start on the Rocky side against Junior Guerrero. I personally, I like Junior Guerrero. I think he pitches well at home, and he's a solid pitcher. But he is susceptible to the blow up. So you got guys like Blackman, Arenado, Carlos Gonzalez, and Trevor Story who all have the potential hit a home run in any game. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of power uh, here. I mean, they're an expensive stack. Um, I, I do like them as one-offs. I mean, Blackman's probably my favorite there um, just because he does have some power, and he's also pretty good in the base paths. Um, one thing I look with Guerrero, I mean, did get hit hard by lefties despite giving up 271 Woba. Um, and looking at kind of his FIP and XFIT numbers, I'm just not buying into him being a great arm. Um, I think he's just going to kind of hover around being a league average right-hander this year. Yeah, I'm not so sure, but um, I think the Rockies are going to carry high ownership. They typically do, just because you know they see their people see their inflated stats from cores, and they don't adjust for the course effect, and they just play guys like Blackman, Arnaud, comes out, uh, Story, Lemayhew, even when they're out of course. So I can see their ownership being high. So a fade is you know it's not out of the question. Um, on the Milwaukee side, though, I like guys like Jonathan VR a lot. Yeah, I mean, this guy, big time power, big time speed. I mean, we saw him basically, I mean, he was kind of an auto lock for most of the season last year just because um, he carried such a high floor and such a high ceiling. Um, I mean, you look at this this Brewers team, I mean, they really are a boomer bust. Um, they do have some cheap power. You know, guys like Thames, um, Arcia, you know, is a guy that I, I like this season. Um, and you look at John Gray, I mean, John Gray actually pitched better in cores last year than he did on the road, but a guy that I'm still high on. Um, but, I mean, looking at it, Miller Park, great place to hit in. It is a great place to hit in, but at the same time, you got John Gray, he got the strikeout stuff, and the Brewers, they struck out uh, above 33% of the time against righties last year, which is an astronom astronomical amount. Um, but then there's guys we could use like Eric Thames. He's been playing over in the Korean league. He had 57 home runs, I think last year in the Korean league, something insane. But at first base, 2.2 K in FanDuel He's priced up on DraftKings. but he's got home run upside and he's been proven to steal bases as well. I, I like, him. he's a guy who I feel like I've known more about this year because of the season log effect. You know, all the guys talking about Thames being a sleeper. I'm curious to see how it kind of transfers into the daily world. Um, but I definitely don't mind him. I mean, obviously Miller Park enhances power uh, from the left side, so uh, I'm okay with using him in tournaments. I am too. And then another cheap guy on the team, Orlando Arcia. He's a, he came up late last year. He's an, one of the top prospects. Uh, he's a righty. He hits righty. He's decent. Um, he's really nothing super special. He's a great all-around player. But at 2.1K at shortstop on a night where you have Kershaw, he's not a bad tournament option. No, I mean, looking at those pump values, I'm certainly okay with using him when Kershaw's sitting over 12K. Yeah, you need someone down there. It's tough to fit in a stack without having a guy around 2.2K or lower. Yeah. Uh, Toronto-Baltimore, next one here. Kevin Gossman taking out Marco Estrada. 
in Camden Yards. This one, um, I, I think it's a solid one-off game to target with. Um, you look at Marco Estrada. This is a guy who can be kind of frustrating if you do full-on stack against because he kind of gives up here and there, but never anything substantial. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest ever stacking against Marco Estrada. He's got the, around a 50% fly ball rate, so really you're going to be watching the game and all you guys are going to be hitting deep fly balls to the warning track and deep in the outfield, and you know maybe one or two would get over for a solo shot, but that's really all he gives up. I mean, I don't mind the power here with guys like Adam Jones or Machado. Um, Trumbo's a reasonable price for his power. Obviously, I don't expect last year's results, but um, this is a guy who hit righties really well, and if that continues into this year, um, I mean, you can get always big upside with Trumbo. Yeah, it's basically pick and choose with these power guys and hope that you get a home run out of them because, uh, like I said, it's going to be all deep fly balls all game, and hopefully one of them gets out of the park. But on the on the Blue Jays side uh, – uh, I really like a lot of guys over there. Gosman's a extreme averse split pitcher, so he's elite against lefties, but he's actually really bad against righties. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking on the slate alone, uh, he has the worst wobo against right-handed pitching than anyone going um, compared to last year's numbers. But yeah, I mean, 349 wobo from Gosman to righties, 1.63 home runs per nine. Um, and basically, when you're getting a heavy right-handed lineup like Toronto, you could be in for some trouble. Um, but also, Gosman, I mean, I don't fully see a blow up but the potential is there yeah we've seen him blow up before he's also got the stuff to be an elite strikeout pitcher um there are some guys I like like devin travis who are his 2.4k on fanduel uh it's really cheap for a guy at second base another one of those cheap guys you could fit in with kershaw and the and thor and whatever and then we got josh donaldson who's the opposite he's one of the most expensive players in the slate but at the same time he's been proven to just absolutely mash yeah, I mean, Donaldson's a guy, obviously, you can pay up for any any night. Um, guys I'm not on for the Blue Jays, I mean, Jose is a little bit expensive for me. Um, obviously, at his age, I'm just kind of a wait-and-see approach with him as we start the year. And with Morales hitting from the left side, I like Morales a lot this year. We'll be using him, but uh, given Gossman is tough on lefties, I'm kind of staying away. I'm staying away, too. And the thing with Bautista is he really fell off the cliff last year. This could, It could just be an anomaly last year, or it could be a, just a really big decline. Um, it's going to be a wait and see approach for him for me. As of right now, I'm off him at his high price. But if he starts getting down like below the three K range on Fanduel, I'll start looking towards him more. Yeah, it's all about for the right price because I think he's just going to be a boomer bust guy this year. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Royals Twins next one. Danny Duffy take on Irvin Santana. Uh, Royals are a team that I just don't tend to really target in tournaments. I mean, outside of maybe Lorenzo Cain against lefties on the, on those nights, um, this is a team that just doesn't have a ton of power. It doesn't. They're big power hitters, Eric Hosmer. I mean, it's an all right spot for him, but Irvin Santana is good against lefties, so it's really tough. Uh, he's got a good BVP, but that's about it. Yeah, and, you know, in target field, I mean, it's not a bad uh, hitter spot, but at this time of the year, it is a little bit just because it's cooler. Um, on the twin side, though, I mean, I like Danny Duffy. I think the strikeout upside is there, but I also think the home run potential for the twins is there, too. Yeah, the twins are actually one of my favorite tournament plays of the, of the day. We got Brian Dozier coming off a 40 home run season. I think that declines a little bit, but it's still a good spot for him against Duffy. Uh, Sano, another one of those power hitters. And then Robbie Grossman, it's going to go under the radar, I think. Yeah, Grossman's a, a stud against lefties. He hit them really well last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, Dozier, Buxton, uh, Grossman, Sano are guys I'm looking at. Strikeout rates are insanely high, so it's just tournament only plays. But I mean, the power's there against Duffy, who. Um, looking at the home runs he gave up last year, I mean, over 20 to right-handed bats um, and was hit actually pretty hard when they did get contact. Yeah, and even Buxton's in play. Like, you can do the full righty stack with this. Uh, he had a 316 Woba against lefties last year, and he had a pretty good spring, too. He looked good at the plate. He looked a little more comfortable. Uh, it could. We had that little stretch of, like, the two-week stretch where he was hitting a home run every other day last season. It might be a sign of things to come. And outside Dozer, I mean, they're all a reasonable price. They are. It's a nice cheap stack if you really uh, – it's one you could fit with Kershaw. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, Detroit and Chicago, next one here, Jose Quintana taking on Justin Verlander. A little bit of weather concern in this one. I think this one's the riskiest of them all. Um, but they're probably going to be doing everything to get this one in. I think so. But even if they don't, it's not a big deal because both teams are off on Tuesday. Um, we're going to assume that it plays as of right now. But even if it plays, the only person in Detroit I'm really looking towards is Victor Martinez on FanDuel. Just because he's uh he's catcher eligibility over there, and then James McCann also, he is another one of those cheap guys, two point two k on Fanduel. He uh extreme platoon, he only hits lefties, and that's about it. 
Yeah, I mean, even though Quintana is a solid arm, never really tends to blow up. I mean, he's a guy who's probably going to give up around two or three hundred runs and go six or seven innings. That's just how Quintana pitches. So I'm okay with using Tigers one-offs, especially in U.S. Cellular or whatever the hell they call it now there. But, um, you know, I definitely don't mind using some of these guys as one-offs. As far as the White Sox, um, I'm kind of off of it. I mean, I, I don't like Verlander at the price, but I think he's good enough to kind of shut them down. I think so, too. Uh, he looked really good last year. I'm hoping he keeps up this form. Uh, he's a reverse split. He's better against lefties, but, I mean, he's still elite against both sides of the plate. Jose Abreu is the only guy with BVP that stands out, um, but BVP is not everything. Uh, maybe a one-off of him, but besides that, I'm off. Yep. Padres Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw, Ulias Chassin. This one, obviously, on the Padres side. No. We, let's Yeah, let's cut it here. Let's move on to the Dodgers. Um, yeah. Andrew Tolles, I mean, obviously a guy who could be projected to hit leadoff. I think it's between him and Logan Forsythe. Um, but as of now, we see Tolles up top in a lot of projection, projected lineups. If he's the case, I mean, I don't care how chalk he is. Um, he's probably going to be an elite value and kind of one of the guys I don't want to fade. I don't either. At 2K, uh, I mean, unless we see him at like 40% in tournaments, I mean, it's a little astronomical on 11 games late. But at 2K on a night with Kershaw, uh, in the outfield, and if he's hitting leadoff, it's just a great spot. Matchup with Yuli Shashin. Um, he's not a good pitcher against lefties. Uh, I pretty much like all the lefties in this order. I do too. Uh, I think the only odd man out for me is Adrian Gonzalez just because, uh, one, ground ball rate's been going up as he's aged, um, but is a cheap guy. I can definitely see the play still. Um, Justin Turner, always a guy who I just feel like flies under the radar because a lot of people just go to Donaldson or Machado and those types of guys. Um, and Turner, 3,500 on DK, show the man some respect. I, he's 3,500 on FanDuel too, so, I mean, come on, FanDuel. Price him up a little bit, and same with DraftKings. Price him up a little more. Uh, he's a reverse splits player. He mashes righties, which a lot of people don't realize that how big of an impact reverse splits have. Because, you know, if people look at righty-righty, like, oh, it's righty-righty, might as well find a righty-lefty matchup or a lefty-righty matchup. But... He's crushed lefties his entire career. He's got a right. He's, he's got a three eighty two woba against them, which is crazy for a righty. Um, right in the middle of that order, that projected to score a lot of runs today too. Yeah, I mean, two lefties hitting in front of him. You got Gonzalez behind him. I mean, I don't even mind. I mean, usually I like to stick within about one through five for the lineup order, but I, I don't mind some of these guys down the the bottom of the Dodgers order anyway. No, you got Grandall if you want to use a catcher. Uh, he's got power upside, especially from the left side of the plate. And then Jock Peterson, he's either 0 for 4, 4 Ks, or 4 for 4, 4 home runs. <laughs> yeah, and Grando, I mean, 3,400 on DK is a really nice price for him. It is. So, uh, Phillies and Reds, last game on the main slate, Jeremy Hellickson taking on Scott Feldman. Um, Vegas has this one, you know, fairly high scoring there in a good ballpark. Um, upside, I mean, I feel like it's a little bit limited as far as like home run department goes, but there are some cheap guys you can look to plug in as far as one-offs. Yeah, and the Phillies, it's uh, going to be tough to find a home run because Scott Feldman has around a 50% ground ball rate. He's an extreme ground ball pitcher. pitcher. Um, he could give up a long ball, but it probably won't be to one of these righties like Franco or Joseph. It will probably come from someone like Saunders or maybe Herrera could uh, squeeze one over the wall or something, but... I'm really looking towards on this Phillies team, uh, Saunders and Herrera, pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, those are the only guys that I'm looking at. Um, you know, Michael Franco, not a guy I just – he just ranks a little bit lower than some of the other guys that I'm looking at their base. But I'm with you. I mean, Herrera's a guy that I, I constantly used last year. Um, good cash game play as well, but I, I do like him in GPPs. On the red side, um, it, it's kind of hard to get behind some of these guys. I mean, I don't think Helixson's going to get, get shelled, but – um, you can definitely use the lefties here. Yeah, you could. And even Billy Hamilton, too. Uh, you know, he could get you a zero or he can get you five steals. Uh, it's just that chance you take with him. You just hope he gets on and steals two bases. And then he pays off his salary right there. But there's guys like Joey Votto who's priced up really high on both sides. But he's never going to get you a zero. You know he's always going to get you on base, especially in this matchup. And then Scott Schebler, uh, a low known player. He's 2.8K in FanDuel. Lefty in this ballpark. Uh, good matchup with Hellickson as well. Yeah, I don't want Shovel. I mean, over 330 Woba against righties last year, uh, 160 ice, so it's not bad, as you said, in that ballpark. Uh, just a question for you as we kind of round out the the uh, podcast here. Was your you know word of the day calendar, was it astronomical? Did you have to use that a couple times today? I did. It actually came up <laughs> in, my, uh, you know, in my little uh, elementary school calendar. It goes, oh, today's word of the day, astronomical, and it showed me the definition, and it showed Good. me uh, Scott Feldman's ground ball weight rate. <laughs> 
So that's going to wrap things up here. Head on over to DaveFantasyCafe.com. Check out our great tools and content for opening day. Yeah, good luck. <laughs>